You may have heard that redheads feel less pain. You may have also heard that they need more anesthesia to knock them out in surgery. And science says both of those things are true. Which is kind of weird, isn't it? Like, isn't that a contradiction? Why do they need more drugs but feel less pain? And what does hair color have to do with any of it? Well, it turns out that the genes that control our hair and skin color are a lot more multi-purpose than you'd think. So here's what we know about redheads' secret pain-sensing superpowers. If you've ever stepped on a Lego before, you know what extreme pain feels like. But as common as it is, pain is surprisingly hard for scientists to understand. For one thing, our bodies have lots of different ways of telling us when and how we're hurting. We have different nerve endings to recognize different kinds of pain, like heat versus pressure, and there are different types of signals that can raise or lower your perception of pain. But pain is especially hard to study because doctors can't measure it objectively the way they do for something like blood pressure. Instead, they use this very high-tech tool, a chart of smiley and frowny faces, where you point to the face that matches how you feel. I don't think I need to tell you that that's highly subjective, which makes it hard to tell how well a new pain medication is working. And it's especially confusing because individual people have different levels of pain tolerance. You probably know someone who acts like a total baby every time they bump their funny bone. And then there's James Bond, who can get shot and beat up all day and still go on to stop the bad guys. And sure, he's fictional, but still. When researchers have tried to look at some of those variations in how people respond to pain, they noticed a fairly unexpected group of people who stuck out. See, as far back as 2005, researchers noticed that people with red hair tend to respond to pain medications differently than non-redheads. Studies have found that redheads need about 20% more anesthesia gas than non-redheads before they stop responding to a painful electrical stimulus. And the same is true with localized anesthetics like lidocaine, which is the injectable numbing agent that's used during things like dental surgery. Some studies have even found that redheads are more likely to be afraid of going to the dentist, possibly because they're less likely to get enough anesthetic to keep them from feeling the drilling. Which is fair. I'd be scared too. But it gets even more confusing. Because while redheads are more sensitive to some types of pain, including heat, they are less sensitive to others. To scientists, figuring all of this out has been, well, a real pain. And while parts of the story are still a mystery, researchers have gotten closer to figuring out one part, the weird relationship between the gene for red hair and an altered response to opioid medications. This SciShow video is supported by Ground News. Keeping up with the latest science news can be tough with all the different narratives out there, and it takes some serious fact-checking to feel confident about what you're sharing. And that's why Ground News exists. You can find it at ground.news slash scishow. Ground News gathers news from 50,000 news sources, so you can see how major events are being covered and read between the lines of media bias to stay better informed on what's going on in science. Like with this story about the lack of a link between mobile phones and and brain cancer. With more than 100 sources reporting on it, the majority of coverage comes from the political center. Scanning through the headlines all collected in one place, you can see that there's a consensus that the World Health Organization reviewed 63 studies covering over 28 years of research and found no link between phone use and brain cancer. Hooray! You can go to ground.news slash scishow or click the link in the description to get 40% off unlimited access with their Vantage plan. Now, before we get too far into all of this, let's start by talking about where red hair comes from. Like other parts of the body, hair gets its color from cells called melanocytes, which produce several different types of pigments called melanins. The two main types are a dark brownish pigment called eumelanin and a reddish yellow pigment called pheomelanin. People with dark skin generally have more eumelanin than those with lighter skin. But we all produce pheomelanin in some body parts, like our lips and some of your other pinkish bits. The difference the differences between melanin types are why some people can get a suntan more easily than others. If your cells can make a lot of eumelanin, your skin can darken when it's exposed to intense sunlight, which blocks those UV rays from doing more damage to your DNA. But if you produce a lot of pheomelanin, your cells just kind of get stressed out, and that lack of protection allows your skin to burn. Melanocytes know which pigment to produce because the body sends them instructions through molecular signals. And they pick up on these signals using a receptor protein on their 
surfaces known as MC1R. You can think of MC1R as a switch that tells your cells whether to print in red or brown ink. When MC1R is on, the cells start making more eumelanin, but when MC1R is off, the cells just make pheomelanin. Now, redheads have a mutation in their MC1R gene, and lots of red animals like Irish setters have that mutation too, although we're still waiting on the genotyping to find out if that includes Clifford the Big Red Dog. The mutation makes it more difficult to activate MC1R, meaning that the cells are all pheomelanin all the time. And so voila, red melanin, red hair. That mutation also explains why so many fair-skinned redheads don't produce enough eumelanin to get a tan. And it turns out that the same proteins that trigger MC1R are also involved in pain. See, melanocytes don't just make melanin. They also produce a protein called POMC, which then gets cut down into a bunch of smaller molecules. And the things that POMC can turn into have a very complicated dance that they do with your perception of pain. Imagine pain tolerance like a seesaw, where one side makes your tolerance go up and the other side makes it go down. POMC and its derivatives have the ability to load kids, or in this case, its protein derivatives, onto that seesaw in a very specific way. For instance, there's one POMC derivative called MSH that has several jobs, including binding to MC1R and switching melanocytes to eumelanin mode. And one of MSH's other jobs is to bind to pain receptors that increase your perception of pain. In other words, if you have a lot of MSH, you'll be crying over every paper cut. But POMC can also be broken down into a hormone called beta endorphin, which affects pain tolerance in the other direction. These bind to your opioid receptors and reduce pain. They're basically acting like homemade opioid drugs, and the result is that they raise your pain tolerance. Think of it as those beta endorphin kids getting on the other side of the seesaw, which keeps your pain tolerance in balance. So essentially, those two pain pathways balance each other out and result in what we think of as a normal amount of pain tolerance. And research from 2021 has found that this seesaw is the key to understanding why redheads have such a complicated relationship with pain. To be clear, it isn't about how much or how little melanin they have. Scientists found that mice with red pigmented melanocytes had a higher pain tolerance even when those mice were incapable of expressing the melanin. So the key isn't in the melanin, it's in the melanocytes. Mice with fewer melanocytes had higher pain tolerances than the others. When the scientists looked at those melanocytes, they found that the same MC1R mutation that caused their red hair also decreased the amount of POMC their cells could make. Less POMC means less MSH, and less beta endorphin. So if we go back to our seesaw, you'd think that this just means that there are fewer kids getting on, but it still stays even, right? Well, it turns out that our bodies make all kinds of other stuff that can get on the opioid end of the seesaw. For instance, beta endorphin isn't the only kind of endorphin out there, and you don't need POMC to make those other ones. So if POMC isn't around to fill up those opioid receptor seats, these other molecules can take over, swarming the seesaw and setting it off balance. That includes opioid drugs, which work by activating the opioid receptors that are all throughout our bodies. And when opioid receptors are activated, they limit how well your nerves can communicate, which reduces how much pain you feel. So if your opioid receptors are already occupied, there are fewer spots for opioid medications to bind to, meaning you need less in your system to tip the scales. And what's really weird is that this is totally reversible. Scientists could reverse the pain resistance in those redhead mice by blocking opioid receptors with naloxone, which is the drug that we normally use to reverse opioid overdoses. Doing so brought the rodent's pain tolerance down to the level of a non-redhead. And that brings us back to the anesthesia drugs we talked about before. See, anesthesia drugs don't target your opioid receptors. The way they work is... Well, it's complicated. But the point is that they're not touching your opioid receptors, which explains why we don't see the less is more effect for those types of drugs. Now, that still doesn't explain why they need more anesthesia, and that's a question for future research. So the mystery of why redheads respond so differently to these drugs is still very much up in the air. As we learn more, figuring out how these melanocytes affect pain could even lead to new pain management treatments. And to the redheads watching this video, while you may not be able to get a tan, at least maybe that paper cut won't make you cry.